Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about a very important cell organelle of plants that is plastids. So what are plastids? These are cell organelles which are present only in plant cells. So they are exclusively present in plant cells. We do not see plastids in animal cells. That is one important thing to note here. Now you will soon get to know what do plastids do and that is why they are not present in animal cells. They bear specific colors imparting pigments. So they have pigments which can impart specific color to the plants. So now you are getting some idea what they might contain. Yes, you are right. They contain pigments like chlorophyll which imparts green color to the leaves. They also contain pigments which impart different colors to the plant. For example, uh, the red color of the flowers or the pink colors of the flowers, yellow color of many fruits. So fruits, flowers, they are of so many different colors. So from where do they get those colors? That is because of some pig pigments which are present in the cells of the plants. So they are called plastids. So there are mainly three type of uh, plastids which we will talk about here and they are chloroplast, chromoplast and leucoplast. Chloroplast is, are those pig is that which contains the pigment chlorophyll. Chromoplast are the colored pigments and leucoplast are the colorless pigments. So let us see where are the plastids located in plant cells. So where can you see them? So these are the plastids. So this is where they are seen. So here it is, it is displaying chloroplast. So now we will talk about the different types of plastids, chloroplast, chromoplast and leucoplast. Where are they found? What do each of them do? So we'll see all that. So let us talk about the types. So we will start our discussion with leucoplast the colorless plastids. So they do not impart any color. Then why are they present? Because they help in storage of food like starch, oils and proteins. So they help that ways. Now there they are different names which are given to each of them. So the colorless plastid which stores starch is given a name amyloplast. Again the one which stores oils is given the name of alioplast. And the one which stores protein is given the name alluroplast. So when you talk about leucoplast, in leucoplast you again have three types. Amyloplast, ileoplast and alluroplast for those which store starch, oils and proteins respectively. Then the next type is chromoplast which are colored plastids. That is, they impart a variety of colors like red, yellow, orange, those kind of colors. Now, why do they produce those type of colors? That means they have, they have a pigment which imparts that color. So, what are those pigments? They contain carotenoid pigment, pigments. These carotenoid pigments, pigments are fat-soluble pigments. They get dissolved in fat and they have... These, they are available in red, yellow, orange colors. That is why you'll see this is a very common color of fruits or flowers. There are so many fruits which are yellow to orange in color. There are so many flowers which are in that color. That is because of the presence of these carotenoid pigments. Some of the example of carotenoid pigments are um, carotene, xanthophyll. These are examples of carotenoid pigment, pigments. So because of from these pigments carotenoid uh, the vegetable carrot got its name. So it imparts yellow, red or orange color. So look at these examples of a, a sunflower or a tomato. They get their colors from these carotenoid pigments. And now the last but not the least chloroplast. They contain the green pigment called chlorophyll. I mean, I don't really need to tell you anything about chlorophyll because we all know it is the pigment which imparts green color to the leaves. And it is because of the presence of this pigment that the process of photosynthesis takes place. So if chlorophyll is not there, photosynthesis will not take place. 
and photosynthesis is the process by which plants can prepare their food if photosynthesis doesn't happen food will not be prepared and the plants will eventually starve and die so this is very very important they impart green color to the leaves now since chloro chloroplast is so very important we will spend some more time to understand the structure of chloroplast so where exactly is this chlorophyll pigment present we all have studied the anatomy of a dicot leaf there we have seen that chloroplast is present in the mesophyll layer do you remember so we will talk about that structure very soon now as i said this is also given the name of kitchen of the cell so chloroplast is the kitchen of the cell so you see you have a kitchen in the cell which is chloroplast you have a powerhouse in the cell which is mitochondria you have a control center in the cell which is nucleus so inside the cell different compartments have been given different specific functions and that is why we talk about compartmentalization of the cell now as i said they are present in the mesophyll layer you remember this anatomy of dicot leaf so here this middle layer this is epidermis this is again epidermis and in the middle you have the mesophyll layer which consists of the palisade parenchyma on the upper side and spongy parenchyma on the lower side so upper side is palisade and lower side is spongy so the chlorophyll or chloroplast is present in this mesophyll layer of the leaves now let us talk about the structure of a chloroplast what all does the chloroplast consist of now the structure of chloroplast is again something very important and something little complex as well so it is again a double membrane bound organelle so you have two membranes one outer membrane and one inner membrane so here you can see this is the structure of the chloroplast so here you have the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane stroma is the matrix so this is your outer membrane this is your inner membrane and inside the inner membrane whatever I mean matrix you have that is the ground substance. So this is the ground substance, the dark green colored structure. So this ground substance is given the name of stroma. So it is a fluid like structure. It is a homogeneous proteinaceous fluid. That is homogeneous. We all know where where there is uniformity in the fluid, and it is it all it is also composed of protein. it can it contains dna ribosomes and enzymes so these are the things which are present in the matrix that is they are present in the stroma when you talk about these two membranes i mean if you talk about their composition their composition is very similar to again the plasma membrane that is they are also lipid bilayers they have two layers of lipids and in that some proteins are embedded now thylakoids are present in stroma so they are another structures which are present in stroma what are thylakoids these are membrane sacs so where do we see the thylakoids now these are the thylakoids you see something like a stack of coins you see something right 1 2 3 so this is the thylakoid so similarly you see it so many places 1 2 3 again 1 2 3 so these stack of coins which you see inside that is nothing but thylakoids so this structure is thylakoid and they are very very important because they are the one which contain chlorophyll so now you understand their importance so what is how is the structure inside the chloroplast the ground substance is all stroma in that stroma there are some membrane bound sacs so each of these coins which you see they are not coins but i'm just comparing them with coins so that it is easier for you to visualize so they are like coin like structure so each of the coin will have a membrane so they are membrane bound sacs and they are arranged in stacks like the piles of coins and they are also known as granul thylakoids or simply thylakoids and they are the ones which contain chlorophyll now there can be many thylakoids in a stack suppose somewhere around 20 to 50 thylakoids can be present in one stack that means in one row where you can see three just three is visible now but 
in reality almost 20 to 50 can be present in one stack and they contain chlorophyll. Now stack of thylakoids is known as grana. So this entire stack is known as grana. So each of them is a thylakoid and the entire stack is a grana. So when I talk about it like this, let us suppose this is your stack. This is the pile of coins. So each of these coin is a thylakoid and the entire stack is a granum, which whose plural is grana. So that is why it is often known as, each of them is also known as granal thylakoid. Now there is another structure called stroma lamellae. What are stroma lamellae? They connect the granal thylakoids. Let us suppose there is one stack like this. There is another stack like this. So there is a structure which connects these two and this structure is known as stroma lamellae. So where do we see stroma lamellae here? Here you can see it here. This is one stack, this is one grana, this is another grana thylakoid. So this structure is stroma lamellae. So they are tube-like structures and they connect the granal thylakoids. Now when you talk about the grana, there, are, there can be many grana, many piles like this present in the stroma. Almost 40 to 100 grana can occur in a chloroplast. So in one chloroplast, at, at, at even 100 grana can occur. Now the arrangement of lipids, enzymes and pigment components is so precise that without these photosynthesis cannot happen. So everything has to be present in the right quantity everywhere. And that is how the process of photosynthesis takes place. So now you understand how the chloroplast look from inside. They have a matrix that is trauma. Inside that they have coin like structures called thylakoids which are arranged in piles and those piles are called grana. Now those pile of thylakoids are connected to each other with the help of stroma lamellae and these thylakoids contain the chlorophyll. So that is how the internal structure of chloroplast is. Now that we have discussed about the structure and types of plastids, let us, quick, let us quickly look at its significance. They help in photosynthesis, of course, they are the chloroplasts are the kitchen of the cell. They also help in storage of plant food, for example, the leucoplasts, which are colorless plastids. They do not impart any color, but they help in storing starch, oils, proteins. They have their own DNA and ribosomes, so can make their own proteins. So again, this is one similarity of plastids with mitochondria. So they also do not have to depend on any external cell organelle to prepare their proteins. So they are again self-dependent. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.